It just doesn't seem possible that this is the end of my 26th year with the Bach Festival Society. It's amazing how time flies when you're making music with your talented friends. I can't thank you enough, all the way from Paul Morvec and Terry Teach out to our Board of Trustee members and Board of Directors, to the patrons, to our magnificent choir, and to the fabulous orchestra for all making this commission for my 25th anniversary possible. Please enjoy the journey and a brief glimpse into what led me here to the Bach Festival and to Rollins College. I hope you know what a, a very important part Bach Festival and all of you have played into my life and the life of my family. Thank you again. Coming here, this was, this was, a, this was really quite a, a surprise. You know, a, a farm boy. Now, I wasn't necessarily lived on the farm, but I lived in a farming community. I, I grew up in a town of 300 people. I think that that must have counted all the farmers all around for miles, because I, I would guess it'd be more like 150 to 200. So then we moved to the whopping big city of Independence, Missouri, where I went to my last year of, of uh, elementary school and went to middle school and went to high school there. And uh, then went just up the road to go get my bachelor's degree at William Jewell College. John and I actually met uh, when I was in high school. I was a senior in high school. John had graduated, but we went to high school together. We were introduced by my best friend and one of his good friends who were dating, and they set us up on a, on a blind date. We went to William Jewell College to a, a Shakespearean play. I remember saying to myself, at the end of that date, this guy I think is going to go somewhere and I, and I really think I'd like to go with him. I was trying to decide whether I was going to be a band director, an orchestra director, or a choir director. But in the wisdom of a 21-year-old, it was closer to my girlfriend, now my wife, so it worked pretty well. I chose my middle school choral director. So uh, we spent the next about three years dating and then I decided to get married and go on with our career, which was to both be teachers. And then started teaching. I was, uh, I, I spent all my time in Missouri up till now, and then ended up teaching in Sedalia and doing my doctorate, master's and doctorate at the conservatory in Kansas City. We moved to Texas, uh, John's first college job at East Texas Baptist College, which then became East Texas Baptist University, no real change except the name. Really were, were just holding a place until we could move on to uh, what John had begun to see as his career, which was to, to teach college. One of the things that really attracted me, besides the knowledge of the Bach Festival, was a phone call I got from Thad Seymour. President Seymour said to me, Rollins is a place where an individual can make a difference and your colleagues believe you're that person. Neither one of us really uh, could imagine ourselves in Florida. We were both Midwestern kids who, um, thinking about moving to the East Coast and to Florida was, was quite an interesting and exciting challenge for us. And then of course coming here after my first year here, I was awarded the McCain Teaching Award. And so I went to have lunch with Dr. McCain in May of 86. And of course, Mr. Tiki and Hugh McCain were best friends, and so I feel like I got some great mentorship in the arts, not only from Mr. Tiki, but from Dr. McCain. That's what Dr. McCain said to me. You know, you do need to wait one more year because the Bach Festival will be yours. And so uh, I started in the fall of 1990 with the Bach Festival. So With John, it has been an amazing, amazing ride. And to see him grow as a conductor, and to see his heart as a musician, but also as an educator, because the two are absolutely intertwined. I've learned a lot, I've enjoyed a lot, and I can say that I am a better musician, I'm a better singer, I'm a better educator in some ways because I have had the wonderful opportunity of being under his leadership. It's been a great 25 years, and I'm looking forward to a few more. People know, but 
but they don't experience it, is how much John prepares for these events and how much really he has worked into the role over, the, over these 26 years. Um, I liken him to the Ever Ready Bunny. You all get the, the battery operated bunny and sometimes what we get at home is the um, de-energized bunny who has to fall on the floor and take a nap. Most of you who know John know that he's a late night person and he spends those nights and hours and weeks um, conducting, practicing, going through the rehearsal in his mind, um, training the muscle memory and so forth, so that by the time he gets to a concert, he has invested many, many hours, many late nights. I know there are probably a lot better musicians than me and a lot smarter people than me, but you're not going to find anyone to outwork me. You could, you could definitely see him feeling his way at the beginning and a little bit afraid of what the choir was going to res respond to him. When it's been fun to see him get to the point where, yeah, he knows he's the boss, he knows what he wants, he knows how to get what he wants. John's a, a major advocate of the idea that you have to get better or you get worse. So I've been watching John make it get better and better and better and it's it's really a, a joy these days to watch how good it's gotten. John's life and his world uh, in music has been a centerpiece in, in all of our lives. Um, we started going to the Christmas in the Park uh, when it was just a few little bleachers and, and a small, smaller choir. We got our uh, green caroling book, the Oxford Carol book, and we went to the park at the uh, Carols in the Park, Christmas in the Park, with a pitch pipe, sang a few tunes standing on baseball risers with spotlights shining on us. I think our crowd that night might have been 100 people, 150 people. And so that's evolved quite a bit. I remember coming in and sitting with Doc and having him tell me all about the department. And he just throws out, oh, and we have the Bach Festival here. We have, it's a professional orchestra and choir and this, this society that we've got. And the first orchestra choir rehearsal, Curtis Rayham came up on the stage and sang the tenor part. And I, I left rehearsal and called my parents and said, you're not gonna believe this. I don't think we would, it would be very easy to find someone to replace him. He just has too many skills, his, his conducting, is just masterful now. It really is. I, he, he has, when he first came to the choir, he was very young, but he has gotten to be, have such a wonderful grasp of what's going on in our St. Matthew Passion and our St. John Passion that we've done the last two years. They were just wonderful experiences, not just from the point of a musical experience, but from the point of view of an emotional and spiritual kind of experience. It's definitely going to happen in Music Awake it, because there are some amazing moments in Music Awake. The quality of the, the musicians I work with in the choir has always amazed me of how, how fast they learn, how fast and quick they study, how dedicated and committed they are to the organization. And to me, it is one of the great joys. Um, Mr. Tiki, in, in mentoring me about the choir, he said they Never forget they're your number one asset of this organization and they are the most important people of this organization. And I never have forgotten that. They are indeed the, the foot soldiers and the people who make this organization who and what they are. And I'm always proud to be affiliated with the Bach Festival Choir. Where one has to go with Bach, it's not where what I do with Bach. It's me getting out of the way and facilitating Bach to the next generation. Just making sure that we are always connecting to the intellectual, spiritual, and emotional needs of our audience. And I think our future will be bright.